Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. First, a word from this month's sponsor, Ethico. In the delicate arena of compliance, every conversation matters. Traditional methods can leave callers feeling unheard, but Ethico changes the game. Our empathetic interview technique reshapes compliance calls into powerful, compassionate interactions, ensuring no crucial detail is missed. It's about creating a conversation that matters, that resonates, that makes a difference. Be the change in your compliance approach. See the transformation for yourself at ethico.com slash CPN. Book a demo, try our free ROI calculator, and explore the white paper by Tom Fox, the ROI of compliance. The Daily Compliance News for July 10, 2024, the Bars of Gold edition. And no, I'm not referring to the Frida Payne um, song from the 60s, but the trial of Senator Robert Menendez, who claims that simply because there were bars of gold in his house does not mean that he engaged in bribery and corruption. And that's a provocative issue, indeed provocative. So there you go. Um, No clear quid pro quo, just bars of gold. And go back and listen to Free to Pain. It's a great song. Uh, Next up from the Wall Street Journal, Risk and Compliance Journal, Richard Vandeford reporting that the U.S. plans to have a broader look at real estate deals near military bases. The Biden administration will put uh, greater scrutiny around deals as uh, continued concerns about China buying up real estate around U.S. military bases. The proposal would allow CFIUS um, to look into real estate transactions on near uh, near more than 50 military sites that previously had not been covered. Um, That means that deals up to 100 miles away from military bases could be blocked. Uh, you want another example about culture and how private equity can destroy the culture of an entrepreneur? Well, we got a story today for you from the New York Times of Carlisle's purchase of the uh, company Beauty Counter and how uh, after three years, um, Carlisle's basically written off their entire investment. Uh, they destroyed the company culture. Uh, they did it through uh, changing the compensation plan, uh, making changes in marketing, and generally doing all the things that private equity does to help a company grow, but recognizing that, once again, if you have a very charma- charismatic leader from an entrepreneurial company with the entrepreneurial spirit that she's able to imbue down through the ranks, you're not careful, uh, you're going to lose it. And that's what happened to um, Beauty Counter, and uh, the company is now worthless. And our final story comes to us from the Washington Post, which reports that the Department of Justice is targeting more white collar crime through whistleblowers. Uh, Justice Department said the recent settlement with the uh, Danish. Donske Bank is an example of this, and under the Biden administration's DOJ, uh, uh, will unveil within three weeks the uh, whistleblower incentive program. Whether they can garner additional whistleblowing uh, remains to be seen, and obviously they've got a great model in place with the SEC program. So more whistleblowers sought by the DOJ. As I mentioned at the start of this podcast, this month's sponsor for the entire Compliance Podcast Network is Ethico. Have you ever wondered how to show the ROI of your compliance program? Have you struggled with the budgeting process, getting the funds you want for your compliance program? Well, I've partnered with Ethico to put together a white paper on the ROI of compliance, which shows you not only how to demonstrate ROI, but also how to speak finance when you're sitting across from the CFO with your budget proposals. Check out the website and get the white paper. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.